This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Body versus Banner. You all have been together for seven years, is that right? Yes. You were recently engaged. Yes. But you broke it off because you believe he's cheating. That's right. Okay, tell us why you're here today. I'm here today because I want to know if I should truly marry Quentin. Um, I don't believe that he is completely faithful, and I believe that he is untrustworthy at times. And um, I just really need to know for the better sake of me and my children that I should proceed with making an effort to go ahead and marry Quentin. So whether you're going to make an effort to proceed with him depends on what happens here today. Yes. What does your gut feel like? It's, it's, like, complicated. I feel like my heart wants to marry him, and then the things, the attributes that he shows me goes against what he says. So he may say, hey, I want to... I love you, I want to be there, I want to marry you, but you're not really doing that. If you wanted to marry me, you would have married me. And if you really love me, you wouldn't do the things that you do to me to put me down and to make me feel less of a person. So, you've already put this marriage on pause. Yes. So, if you should find out he is, in fact, cheating today, you're done. Possibly. Possibly. Mm -hmm. And that's what's eating up at you. Yes. Mr. Cullen, it's a heart and a head thing right here. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And as a woman, I get that. Where your heart is like, I love you. And your head is like, why are you doing that? Right. (laughs) All right, Mr. Banner, you heard what's at stake here. Why are you here today? I'm here today because... We were supposed to get married, and a week or two before we were actually supposed to do it, she cut off all communication with me. Okay, so you feel like she left you at the altar. Basically. That's basically what you did. But she's now opened this case against you because she's still not trying to get to the altar because she believes you're cheating, right? Right. Okay, so my question to you is, how do you feel about all this? I mean, I feel like you can't have your cake and eat it, too. You can't be like, I want to be with you when I want to be with you. And then when I want to be there, then you want to push me away and do all this other stuff. Now, here's the thing. I know women. I met a couple. I am one. (laughs) And women want to be with a man who loves them. Right. So, and, and most women... Honestly, have been planning their wedding since they were three years old. Mm. Since three? Yeah. You were yeah. planning your wedding since three years old? <laughs> well, I knew what was coming, so I start planning before then. <laughs> so, no. So, but... you, had a jo- you had a real head start on me then. I, I didn't yeah. start at three. Yeah, no, you put on the sweater and act like you're walking down the aisle. Every girl plays wedding. All right, that's good to know. Note to file. Note to file. So, she's been playing wedding for a long time. What is it that's happened uh-huh. that makes her think she doesn't need to marry you? She did know me to have certain women problems. Ah. And it's not like it's a regular thing, but she's, she's smart. Like, she hacks my account and stuff. Like... <laughs> All right, so do you think she's paranoid or is it insecurities? What do you think is I think it's all that. that. She, she, be, she be tripping sometimes. All right, so Ms. Cutler said there's a conflict between your heart and your head. What is it about your heart that's keeping you with him? I know how he used to be when we first met. And I know the type of family he was brought up in. It's like, I feel like sometimes you're trying to be this person that you're not, but in some aspects, you're, you're taking on that side so much that... It's just kind of continuous to play I don't out. Think it's like, okay, so that tell I'm me what it was like in the beginning. We said yeah. when you first met. Tell me yeah. about that. Yeah, okay. When we first met, it was it was nice. It was sweet. He didn't give me no issues. We actually met in a skating ring. Do you skate? I don't skate that much, but you know, I wanted to learn. He just didn't teach me like that. But um. You know, we met in a skating ring. Really? No, for real. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, basically, what happened was he worked there, and ah. he skated there. And he started doing, like, little skates and doing little tricks and stuff from me and grabbed my hand, and I was like, what is this? Oh, so you were a smooth skater and a smooth talker. Oh, look! look, look. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I I try to do a little something-something. Look at those. Look at that. Look at that. (laughs) Okay, so I got to tell you this. So I saw him. Well, actually, I was getting ready to fall. And he (laughs) helped me, kept me from falling. Well, I was such a bad skater. Yeah. that I couldn't even catch up or tell him thanks, but I did get a good look at him. And I thought, mm. 
And uh, uh, he had on black... He had on black pants and a black shirt. And, and so, when I met him actually in real life, because we, that was our meeting at the skating rink, I told him, I said, you got black pants and a black shirt. He said, how do you know that? And I was very specific about whose shirt it was and all that. He said, how do you know that? I said, I know everything. But it was because I saw him at the skating rink. And she's been telling me she knows everything ever since. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, from your perspective... How did we meet? How did you meet? So, I'm um, working there. I went on my little, my little cigarette break over there. So, I'm smoking outside. And this car pulls up under the vestibule. And um, this girl gets out, a little light skin, pretty little thing with this long, curly hair. I was like, oh, my God, Jesus is answering my prayers today. <laughs> I'm about to go get her right now. I don't, I don't need no other girl once I get her. Like, I'm good. Anyways, now, now <laughs> we're here. Now we're here. And as you can see from what he's saying, he's like, oh, you know, she's going to be the woman for me, the son and third. Okay, but I'm still not. Because you're still with all these other women. And it's frustrating. But I'm not. And, but you are. You are. I've been with one person outside of him. And that's the main thing he uses against me. And it's like, I feel like that's like the ultimate for him. Because you always hold stuff over my head, but you've been with somebody you, too, so how can you keep holding stuff over my head? I've been with one person. I've been with one person. Does that matter? You still went with, you still went with somebody else. I've been with one else. person on, on the strength of you doing what you was doing to you me. You gonna... What? We was on a little break. When Quentin came back around, I left him. I didn't did care you? nothing about that's him. A lie. I did. That's, that's a not lie. a lie. All right, so, Miss Body, you believe that he's cheating now. Yes. I believe that he is still intimate with either another female or multiple females. I feel like he is somewhat of a womanizer and he doesn't recognize it in himself because he uses women to get what he wants. What am I using? Different women. What am I using? What are you using? You use them for their car. You have sex with them. You do different things. I never things. have my own car. They bring you things. All right, Miss Body. Car car now. You have Ms. a car for But you body. use them to get what you Ms. want. Miss Body, do you have specific evidence that he is in fact cheating? Yes, I do. All right, talk to me about that. Yeah, we were at his mom's house, and what happened was um, I waited till he fell asleep. I waited till he fell asleep so that I can go through his phone, as he stated, I know his codes and stuff. And I read some of his text messages from different females, some in particular that I wasn't fond about at all. What kinds of things did these text messages say? Um, sexual things. I want to have sex with you, or I want you to please Is that, me. That's what I say, Mr. Banner. Hold, I, I'm gonna give you the a chance. The females will be telling him, "Oh, I want to do this. See, I want to do this." And he's just leaning them on, like, "Okay, yeah." Mr. Banner, you want to talk now? Talk. Why are these text messages in your phone? First of all, just because I get I get text messages. I don't have to be the one sending the text messages, sending some some freaky stuff. That's not that don't have to be but me. But you're entertaining. You don't have to be the person sending them, but you are the person receiving them. So exactly. what we want to know I'm is guilty. moreover, not just receiving them, but responding to them. Okay, so why are you receiving and responding these text messages from other women who want you to do these things for them? You wanted to talk. You were interrupting her while she was talking. Now it's your turn to talk. What you got? So a lot of times, like, we'll be together, like, today. And three hours from now, she will hate my guts. By Monday, she'd be like, I love you so much, and I want to work everything out, and da, da, da. If you say you want to be with me, you don't want to be with me. Like, I don't so know you I'm keeping, to do. So you keeping options. You are... Like, well, she don't want me now, so who else want me? Exactly. I, and then, really oh, like I don't that. need you now, because she got me back. You keeping your options open. He's so disrespectful that he showed me a video of a female seductively dancing for him. And I said, what are you getting out of this? Like, why are you showing me this? I feel like he, he wants me to be this certain type of sexual person that I don't always want to be. And you have this belief that he's cheating because of the text messages, because of the other women, because of the video. Yes, that's why I think he's cheating. It's not only that, it's because of the way that he puts me down in certain ways. And it made me feel like I wasn't, like I wasn't worthy of anything. So I found myself trying to do things to please him, even different sexual activities to, and I would be like, you know, he asked ask me, or oh, do you like it? And I'm like, yeah, because I'm so afraid of losing him. But then I sit here like, he should be freaking afraid of losing me because <laughs> there's so many different people out here that want to be with me. And he's like, he, sometimes when I tell him that, he's like, oh, so this only because that, that guy want to have sex with you and this and that and the third. So he makes me feel like 
I'm not smart. He makes me feel incapable of doing things. But don't you and... always come back and tell me something always happened to you? And then I always got to come to your rescue for every... somebody trying to mess with you or something? But you don't really rescue me. I don't? All right. But, so but you always come to me. So I'm Mr. always Bad. there for you. I come you. to you because I expect you to be that person for me. And I am but, there every but, time. But you're not there I'm for there me. every time no, you're for not. you. I'm no, not. you're not. Bro, who, right. who has you when you got into an accident? And Mr. Me. We were both in an accident. What are you supposed to do? All right, so... To help get to the bottom of this, the court has engaged the services of licensed private investigator Eric Eccles. Ron, would you please show Mr. Eccles into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. Good morning. Mr. Eccles, how are you today? How are you doing, Your Honor? All right. Mr. Eccles, can you explain the investigative technique that you use in this case? On this particular case, I did what's called covert surveillance. Mr. <laughs> Banner did not know that he was being followed. And as you can see, I followed him here from his job to his home location, and I followed him for a few days. Now, it gets a little exciting now. Oh, okay. Day one at 7.40 p.m., while he was under surveillance, a white vehicle with a female driver backs into his driveway and sits there for a few minutes, and Mr. Banner came out, sat in the vehicle, and they talked for a few minutes, about five or 10 minutes. He exited the vehicle, and then the lady drove off. Did you see what was going on in the vehicle? No, at that time, I did not. Okay. On day two, about 5'10", when he got off work, he was again followed, and he came back to his job location. He was picked up by another female in another vehicle, and su surveillance was maintained, and I followed him the rest of the day. Two different women. Two different women, two different vehicles on two different days. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Body, what's going through your mind right now? One, I thought she was catching the train and the bus to work every day. And then, clearly, I could see those are two different cars. And again, these are all females. Like, he, he used them to get what he wanted. I don't know what the freak he doing with them, even if it's just for a ride. These are stuff that you are doing with them. So it don't matter to me what he say at this point no more. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting frustrated and irritated. Mr. Banner, who are these women? The woman in the white car, she knows. It's my play sister. It's two of them. Well, I, I call her my twin. Who was the second woman? The second one was the Uber driver who picked me up. That was no female to Did come pick me up. Did you get into the front seat or the back seat? The back seat. I didn't get in the front seat. We're looking at the tape. It's a little sketchy, but in the tape, you can see he, he walks around to the side of the vehicle, and you see him getting in and then the car drives off. It does appear he got in the back seat on that one. <laughs> and I'm looking at his head. It looks like it's behind the, the headrest. All right, so you use the car service. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, Mr. Banner, I have one question for you. Have you been cheating? No. All right. To further get to the bottom of this, the court ordered a forensic voice analysis, and our analysts submitted the results to the court. Before we read these results, I'm gonna give you a chance to tell your story. Don't make me tell your story from here. If there's something negative that you need to share, this is your time to come clean. Delisa, you know, we be on and off a lot. And in the time that we been off, I, I know I was with other women. And I can honestly tell you that I'm not proud of the decisions that I made, but when you keep going back and forth, it's hard to deal with that. It's like you have a problem mentally, emotionally. I'm mentally, emotionally, physically attached to you. So when you break away from me, it do something to me, and it makes me go elsewhere, because I'm looking for what I lost. And I know my actions ain't right all the time, but I know, I know I've been with other women. How many times, Mr. Banner? Um, I couldn't tell you. Three, five, 10, 20? I couldn't tell you. But you know what? This is the first time I felt you've told the truth. Yep. And I'm looking at Miss Body. She don't like what you told her. But I think you appreciate the truth, don't you? How do you feel? I don't know. I just can't trust him. So it's like... 
I want to hop back into something so quick and just be everything he needs me to be. But it's like that other side of me is like betrayal. It's like I can't, I don't know how, how to come from that. Let me say this to you. You clearly love each other. You can't run and put him out or you run from her every time you get sideways with each other. When you are mad at each other, when you feel you're not getting the attention that you need, the key to that is not to run and get it from somewhere else. The key is to sit down, talk about it, and work it out. Your actions speak louder than words. Act like you love each other. You all have been together for a while. You are recently married. And at the point where you should be trying to get this marriage off to a great start, Ms. Bullock, you've got some concerns that your husband is cheating. Yes, sir, I do. And if you find out that he's cheating, you want this marriage annulled? Yes, sir, I do. I'm through with it. So tell us why you are here. I'm here to figure out what it is, what it ain't, and what it's gonna be. I'd rather find out now... I'd rather find out now, you know, versus 10 years from now, I still got this same stuff on my mind. So you have doubts this early in your marriage about whether you even gonna make it? Basically, and that's not good at all. So is it when you look at him, you're like, yeah? Or is it you just look at him, you're like, I don't know what you're doing, but you're doing something. What is it? Sometimes I give him the look like, kind of want to do something to you a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) That's the the one where I say go, yeah. But the other look is what else? I'm the type of person growing up, I've, you know, learned if a person will cross you once, they'll cross you again. Okay. And you feel like this is happening, this happened, and you don't want it to happen again. Yes, Your Honor. I do not want it to happen again. All right, Mr. Tate. Mr. Tate, you've heard what your wife has to say, what she's accusing you of. What are you here to show today? I'm here to tell her that I'm not cheating. I'm here to make everything right. And everything you say I'm doing is not true. And it been knowing you since the eighth grade. And I just want to... I just want to make sure we just stick together until death do us part. Well, your wife is looking at you with this look like... What was that again? Like, Gia. (laughs) <laughs> okay. She's giving you that look. I can't do it, but that's... that's Do it again. Stop it. It's... One more time. One more time? Yeah. Jail. Okay. <laughs> She's giving you that look. I don't know why she feel like that. I wouldn't cheat. We just got married, and I love her. Sound good, don't you? It does sound good. <laughs> and wait a minute. At some point, it sounds good enough for you to hook up with him. Tell me about how y'all met. Well, we met in middle school, and, you know, like, he was new, so, you know, all the little girls, they, oh, he fine, he got dreads, uh, you know. You were one of those little girls. Yeah, but I was okay. determined, like, I'm gonna get him. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about him that made you say, yeah, I'm gonna get him? The dreads, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, but it was something else. Did you know the girls were scoping you out, Mr. Tate? Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. Uh, <laughs> Look, you got it, you got it, you know? Uh, how you know that? I'm just going by what he said. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, okay, how'd you know? You saw him checking you out? Seeing her, I knew I wanted her. She was cute and everything. She got a cute thing working. Yeah, she was cute <laughs> and everything, so... Okay, what was it made you stay in the game and want to marry her as an adult man? Like, I've been knowing her for so long, since I was 13, and we've been sticking around. It's something about her that I love. Y'all been together about seven years, right? Seven or eight about years? Six. Okay. Yeah. So, That's so, about how long we were together. Yeah, before, before we, we got, got married. married. Yeah. So you all have figured out this is the point. This is the one. But now you think he's cheating. Yes, Your Honor, I do. What are the warning signs that you saw? He had said one remark about someone I was dealing with when we were split for a while. It was like nine months we were split up. And when we got back together, I told him who I was dealing with, what happened, and, you know... But he never told me who he was dealing with. So I said, you know what? You ain't gonna tell me who she is. I got something for you. I went to his Facebook and I unblocked every female on there because I like, I, I know she on here. I don't know who, but if I unblock everybody, I know I got her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when she sees she's unblocked, she gonna shoot a message. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like... okay. So, you... Mr. Tate, were you dealing with somebody during this break? Yeah, I was. Like, not no... I wanted to be with you for a long time type, but just communicate. So, is there a reason why you haven't told your wife like, who this person is and what was going on? It's a reason because I don't want stuff to backfire. Like, we together and... He don't want her to get the... beat up. What's the... <laughs> is that a real thing? You might beat her up? 
Most definitely. Uh, All right, there it yeah. is. I can't... Well, so, that's why you haven't told her who she is? No, nah, that's not the reason. The reason oh. is why, because I don't want her to inbox or call her, because we married now, so what's in the past in the past, but people childish, and I know they'll inbox her and be like, But, why but the world get... still should know about our marriage. Like, so... everybody on their block list, ain't no point to block them. They gonna see, you know what I'm saying? Let them see. That's a nice thing, though, right? If everybody's blocked, that means he's blocked them. Don't contact me. Out of and you the, unblock the, them. Invite them back into your relationship. No, that no, no, no because no, no, that's no. that's where temptation come in. You should be mentally strong enough not to dibble and dab back into that. You don't. You shouldn't have to block someone in order to keep from messing with them. You know what I mean? Okay, so color. I think what you're saying. Hey, he's doing the right thing by keeping these women out of their lives. Right, by blocking them. But what she's saying is one, they need to know what his life is about, and his life is me. That's one. Then two. If they do show up, he should have the intestinal fortitude to go, no. And then the third thing is, and this may, you know, this is being on the bench for a while, right? Okay. If he blocks and unblocks and blocks and unblocks, you can't keep up. Exactly. So if he's unblocked completely, then you see who's instant messing, who's inboxing him. But if he's on and off, on and off, on and off, you can't keep up with Hit that. Hit the nail right on the head. That's but if why he, I but do if what I do. If he's blocking and keeping people out... <laughs> okay, but Mr. Tate, let me make sure I understand. You're blocking these women because you don't want them involved. You, like, you put right. them off to the side. Right. I don't want them no more. Like, this the, woman, this the woman I want for the rest of my life. And I know they will be messy. And so. that's why you shut them out, right? Right. And you did a good thing, right? Right. Okay, that's why I do what I do. <laughs> yeah. But why do you think he's cheating now? Because that was in the past, but you think something else is going on now. Yes, I do. Okay, why? Oh, we got... We got exhibits. This is what I found in his armrest. And we don't even use these, and everyone knows three comes in a small pack. Okay, well, how did you find them in the car? Tell me the story. Tell me what happened. We were at a family event. I opened the armrest. Boom. Here go some condoms. And I'm like... Like, what the do hell you... is this? Okay, do you not use condoms? No, we do not. So you're like, why you got these? Exactly. Not, not only why you got these, but where's the one that's missing? Ah. Oh, that's the other that's piece. The that's the mystery. Yeah. That's the mystery. Okay, but... what happened when, when she confronted you with this? Yeah, I... I... <laughs> See, it's funny. Why is it funny? <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. But at the time, I had just got out the car. I hopped back in the car. Boom, they in my face. She waving in my face Wait a minute. Stuff. Show me what she did with them. All right. I closed the door. Boom, hit me in the lip. <laughs> <laughs> she smacked just you smacking with Just smacking me condom? with it. Just smacking me with it. That is too funny. And just smacking me with the condom. Like, where did these come from? Where did these come from? So I had to explain what, where they came from. All right, we want to hear that, that. What was that explanation? Uh, at the time, uh, I was helping a friend. And then... Garbage. Chill out, chill out. I was That's helping a friend. Warby. He had a, he was just he just got kicked at the house and threw all the stuff in the in my back seat. He had a box of them. They fell over in my car and stuff. He like, you want some? You want them? I like, yeah. If I wanted to hide them, they would be in a better place than my armrest, like thrown in the armrest. Like where? But, Why you saying, need some condoms if you don't? Hide them. Yeah, if you all don't use them in your marriage. What you need them for? What do you need them for? Why would you say, yeah, let me have those? Man, I don't know. I was just helping him, just rushing him out the car. They fell over in my car. Now I wasn't cheating at the time. I just said yeah and just threw them in the uh, armrest. He had intentions on using them. That's how I feel if you, you know, accept some condoms. Like, you're not in no sex ed class and people giving out condoms. Like, <laughs> and another thing is, he be lying about where he going and where he at. Can, can I show you? Sure. You brought an exhibit? You gonna go to the screen? There's an app called Phone Finder that oh. we had on both of our phones. He didn't know that I knew his login and password on the information. So we had he... got into an argument and he had left. This is where he's supposed to be. He told and you he was going I, to a family member's I called him house. and, you know, I see where he is, but I'm like, okay, he's four minutes away, but let me call to see if he gonna lie first. I'm like, okay, where you at? He like, okay, I'm at, uh, you know, uh, uh, my family member house, you know, woo-woo-woo, and I'm like, okay, I played it smooth. I hang up. I put on some Tim's, some shorts. I ain't had no shirt on. I put on a jacket. And I'm going to the location. On my way over to the location, he actually is passing me through traffic. But instead of me, I'm gonna walk back over here. I'm All right, so wait, hold on just a minute. <laughs> he 
is supposed to be 18 minutes away at the family member's house. Yes, Your Honor. But he's actually four minutes away. Yes, Your Honor. Right. You have gotten dressed, shirt, and you going over there to find out who and what. It say it was four minutes away. I feel like I got there in two. Okay, so let me ask you this. Did you actually go over to this house? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay, what happened then? then? It, defe it defeats the purpose of having a GPS tracker if you ain't gonna go to the location. <laughs> I... You know... I'm not sure about that, but okay. I think that might be in their slogan. It defeats the purpose if you don't go to the location. I don't know about all that. So what happened when you get there? So, I had a family member with me, the family member's house that he's supposed to be at. So he goes and not, they cracking the door, they don't want to really too, too, too much give information. I said, you know, he asked them, who was Isaac over here for? And somebody said, you know, oh, my sister or whatever. So we pulls off, I speed, and I meet him like, so you want to ride back over me where you just left from or you want to stay here? And he talking about, what you talking about? What you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, dude, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Then he get the stuttering when he be lying. <laughs> okay, hold up, Miss Bella. Did you see her in traffic? Yeah, I seen her in traffic. Did, nah. Were you hoping she didn't see you? No, nah, I knew she seen me because I went over there for some gas money. I just asked a friend for some gas money. So this is a female friend? A female friend. Did you go for a ride to get some gas money? Or did you use your gas to go over there and get a ride? He used his gas to go over there and get a ride. <laughs> Mr. Cutler! That, look, that's the question everybody wants to know the answer to. I want to know the answer to it. You want to know the answer to it. I know, but the way you said it... <laughs> That's what we want to know. I want to go get some gas money. Okay, but did you have any kind of sexual contact with this woman? No, sir. That, no, sir. At all. None? No. No kissing? No kissing. No hugging? I no feel hugging. like if there's... No case, sexual contact wow. at all. Why no she didn't want to come contact. outside? Well, you said you were suited up for war. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm sure you didn't go... You weren't standing out there like... I'm sure you were like... I, I, I could... Yeah, yeah, no, I... I, 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 I get it. <laughs> All right, so I think we have enough evidence, Mr. Cutler. What we have here, she tracked his location. She, he said he was going to a family member's house, but he was at this other woman's house, getting money, no less. Mm -hmm. And then the real one, the one that we all have some questions about, are the condoms in the car. That she slapped him with those condoms. Even though they don't use condoms. Even though they don't use condoms. So why would he need them? And Miss Bullock has said that this new marriage will be annulled if she finds out he has, in fact, been cheating. Yes, ma'am. You out. I'm out. So all the love and sweetheart and all that, done. Out the window. This court has done a full and complete investigation. Because we have evidence of Mr. Tate changing his passwords and his online activity, at this time, the court will call digital forensic consultant Patrick Seward to determine, is he cheating? The court ordered Mr. Tate to submit his phone for forensic digital examination. Yes. Mr. Stewart, what were you able to uncover from Mr. Tate's phone? So we were able to recover 7,720 photos and 1,294 messages. Wow, that's a lot of pictures. It is. Did you find anything provocative in Mr. Tate's phone? Yes, I did. Oh. I was able to recover uh, two sexy photos of a woman. Okay, so we're looking at a picture of a woman, and she has her T-shirt up and holding her T-shirt and her teeth very sexily, with, I presume. With a black bra. With a black bra and her bosom out. And it, then it's another picture of the same woman, it appears, where she's taking the T-shirt off, and you can see her, her in a bra, and her belly butt disappears. So, Mr. Tate, who is this woman? Uh... I'm not sure. I got to see the face. Ron, would you please uh, hand Mr. Tate those pictures so he can identify the person in them? These are old. Those are back when we had broke up and got back together and everything was in the past. Those weren't the females. They was deleted and blocked. All right. You have not had contact with this woman since you married? No, I haven't. All right. Ms. Bullock, what's going through your mind at this point? I'm pissed off kind of shaking on the inside. I'm just trying to say a peaceful prayer. Well, to further investigate this matter, this court ordered a polygraph examination of Mr. Tate 
And at this time, we like to call licensed polygraph examiner and private investigator Kendall Scholl. Ron, please escort Mr. Scholl. Kendall Scholl. Thank you, Mom. Mr. Scholl, how are you? Great, Your Honor. Thank you. How are you? Doing good. Good to see you. Good to uh, see you. You conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Tate, correct? I did. You asked Mr. Tate, did you have sexual intercourse with a woman you claim gave you gas money on the day your wife saw you leaving her house? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. I see a little smile, but you already told me that's just one this question. Is one. All right. <laughs> you asked Mr. Tate, since being married, have you had sexual intercourse with any other person other than your wife? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? On this question, it was determined that he was being truthful. <laughs> I would like to apologize. <laughs> even though, even though I had, you know, several reasons to suspect, obviously I was wrong, and hopefully we won't have to do this again. You all have been together for six years. You had one child together. And the future of this relationship depends on what happens in court here today. Am I right, Mr. Franklin? Yes, sir. Now, you've opened this case. Tell us why. I suspect she's cheating on me uh, because for the past couple months, she's been real secretive with her phone. Every time I asked her about it, she's like, it's none of my business, makes me out to be crazy. Your she Honor, pays the that? bill and she keeps it locked all the time. And we have sex less often. We went from two or three times a week to now maybe once, twice a month. And. Your yeah. Honor, the problem with the phone is that's my only thing I have to myself 100%, I feel. And every time he has it, he'll find the littlest thing on there. Oh, you deleted your uh, history of your internet. Well, it's my business. All right, but the other thing, more, maybe more important than what's going on with the phone is, he says your sex life has decreased. Absolutely, it has. When we first got together, Jack Rabbit style. Oh, she style. admits it. And then... Jack Rabbit style. <laughs> I, is there a Jack Rabbit style, Miss Keller? <laughs> I think there is. Okay. Yeah. I missed that. And yeah. then I did have surgery about two years ago, which I took the feeling away from the waist down. No feeling. So it has oh. changed. It does get boring, may I say. What made it boring? Is it the fact you can't... Nothing changes. It's the same routine. Oh. Got a kid. Kid goes to sleep, got five minutes, okay. So he's not rocking your world anymore? Is that what I'm hearing you say? Right. right. You're just like, you're not interested. Absolutely, Your Honor. And Mr. Franklin, has she <sighs> talked to you about the fact that she is bored? No. This is the first you're hearing about This is the first it. I've heard of it. Well, okay. that would be something you need to tell them. They, you shouldn't guess. Here's what I'm thinking now, she's bored. Mm. Which means, okay, well, she still wants to have sex, she still enjoys it, but she's bored. So now, is she getting it from somewhere else? Exactly. That's the big question. Exactly. <laughs> so, are you getting excitement elsewhere? Absolutely not, Your Honor. I'm the, I'm the type of woman, I'm with somebody, I'm with them. But if you're bored, you're gonna, you're gonna look somewhere else, right? No. What have you observed that well, makes you think that she has stepped outside of your relationship? Well, here a couple months ago, we got into an argument. I left to cool down. I came back. She was gone. Well, when I get back, I sit there and I'm waiting. A couple hours passes. She comes walking in. And as she walks in, I noticed the smell of a cologne was different. It wasn't mine. I only wear two different no, colognes. No, Your Honor. That's okay. Fine. So, and then I noticed her makeup was smeared. So, Mr. Franklin, you have an exhibit. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Can I show you? Absolutely. This is what she looks like normally. Okay. With her hair up in a bun, makeup perfect, you know, nothing wrong. Right. Okay. The night in question, this is what she looked like. Makeup okay. smeared, eyeshadow smeared, hair all messed up. 
Lipstick is smeared. And... Yes, okay. sir. Okay. And so this is what came home when you when she came home. This is how she. That's looked. how she looked. Yes, ma'am. Completely different. Yes, ma'am. Well, Your Honor, I yeah. can explain this. I can explain you, this. Okay. The day that this happened, he's claiming, is I was at a neighbor's house. It was girl time. We was doing makeup, you know, that kind of thing. Well, and then we went outside. Where we live, it was like 95 degrees. I was playing with my son. She has kids. And when I got done, when I went home, of course, it was smeared and all that. You know, Miss mm. Burnett, this was you know, a couple questions I have, or a couple observations. You know, the makeup people spend a lot of time making sure their product doesn't just run and smear because it's hot. I mean, you see all the commercials, women are doing this, they're doing that, they're running doing this, their makeup isn't smeared. So, I mean, the purpose of makeup is to look nice, but it's also designed so it doesn't just smear like that. Yeah, you but when be... I do mine, I only take like five, 10 minutes. But <laughs> here's my thing, this was at night, though. I, that was, at this, that was my question. Though? I mean, come on now. I know a little bit about makeup. And you might get away with the eyeshadow being a little less smooth or a little less in place, but that lipstick being smeared, that doesn't come from playing outside. That comes from your mouth being pressed on something. A drink bottle. Well, so if I go in and... No. What, what are you doing? So, so if I lean and try... No, I'm not... Uh, no. I'm trying to get an idea of, of this smearing... That's a lesson for later, man. I'm not doing this up here. All right. We'll smear uh, later. We'll smear later. We'll smear later. Okay, all right. So I just... It's hard for me to understand how your lipstick was messed up. That's... that. You know, I can give you the eyeshadow. I can even give you the hair. But the lipstick messed up, and it happened. You said she came home at night, and it looked like that. Yes, ma'am. That's the problem. So the question, Miss Burnett, is who were you with? Nobody but him. You weren't with another man who, no. who messed up your makeup? No. Who smeared your lipstick? No, Your had Honor. Had your hair all over your head? No, Your Honor. She's no, adamant. No, no, no. She's no. adamant. She's adamant. There's another incident with a guy in a sports car. I was we got into an argument. I go outside, walk around to cool down, I left, come back. I was gone maybe an hour, come back, she was gone. So I'm walking around theme outside, here. you know, to try to keep cooling down, you know. And I'm sitting there at the edge of the woods there at the property line, and I was sitting there and I watch this car pull up. Here we go, so looking for another it. reason. So I'm watching this car pull up. Well, I seen it's her in the passenger seat and another dude sitting in the driver's seat. Okay. So they sit there and they yeah, talk for it's a, a minute. Dude. Hold so on they the talk for a minute, and then she gets out, comes in the house. Well, I ask her, I say, who's the dude? She proceeds to tell me that it was her family member's boyfriend. And I've never seen this dude. I know her. I've met her whole family. I've never seen this dude a day of my life. So I, you know, and then it gets turned around on me like I'm the one doing something wrong. I'm crazy. I'm stupid. But yet I know what I see. So did I'm she see blind. you when you, when she got out of the car and was coming in the house? Did she see you? No. Okay, so... For all she knew, you weren't home. Exactly. Did you see her kiss him or anything in the car? I didn't. It, I didn't see her do that. No. Okay. Miss Burnett, you and Mr. Franklin get into an argument. You leave, mm -hmm. and then you come home in some other man's car. Mm -hmm. And you're saying my family member's house. Okay. Then Mr. Franklin said it wasn't like the car pulled up. You immediately got out. You saw them sitting there talking for a while, right? Yep. Okay. That the, that's the part that kind of strikes me as odd. Made a if conversation, it was... I have nothing to hide. I can come and carry on a conversation with anybody. Let me ask you, was her lipstick smeared? <laughs> it was smeared this time, too? Yeah, okay. Why was your lipstick smeared? Who knows? I don't know. I didn't look in the mirror. I have some <laughs> ideas. Well, I think okay. what he's thinking, that you were kissing this other guy. Yep. That, and you're saying no. No. Mr. Franklin, do you have any other reason to believe that she's cheating? Yeah, yes, sir, I do. Um, we get into it, and uh, she takes off, says she's going to the neighbor's house. Okay. I sent her a text. She says she was at the neighbor's. Okay. Hour two goes by. I'm like, you know, what's going on? Where's she at? So I walk up to the neighbor's house. I knock on the door. He comes to the door. And he said, uh, man, he said, I hadn't seen her in a couple of days. And he asked his wife, he said, have you seen her today? And she said, no, not in a couple of days. 
Well, I've got proof to present to the court today of what he's seen and what he told me that day. Ron, would you please get yes, that Sharon. statement? Thanks, sir. So she sir. told you she was going to be at a neighbor's house. Yes, sir. After an hour or so, you go up there, and the neighbor says not only is she not there, he hadn't seen her in a couple of days. Yes, sir. Let's look at what the neighbor wrote. To whom may concern, this is William Murphy writing to tell the courts that on the day of July 6th, Bobby Franklin came to my apartment asking if Samantha Burnett was up at my apartment. I had told Bobby that I haven't seen her in over two days, and it signed William Murphy. Yes. Okay. So you're telling him you're at the neighbor's, and he, the neighbor's saying, I haven't seen you in two days. What's up with that? Where we live, it's an apartment complex. I go from one to the other. There's no telling where I'll be down there. I didn't Not think of it. No, she only goes to that apartment complex because we have got into it with the other neighbors around there. So you're saying no telling where I was. That's... It's an apartment complex. Yep. No telling where you were. Absolutely. So you admit you weren't at the neighbor's house, right? right? Correct. Okay. And what? the sports car has not brought her home not once, but twice. The same car. Here we go. So when she, vent- when she does come back home, she comes back home in the sports car? Yes, sir. And where are you at this point? I was in the house watching. And right. it's the same car? Yes, ma'am. Was her lipstick smeared? Yes, ma'am. I've been with her for six years, and I ain't gonna lie, I love the woman with all my heart. And I was planning on marrying her. But if I find out today that she has cheated on me, it's done. I'm gone. She can have whoever she wants, be whatever. I gotta tell you, you know, seeing your woman pull up in somebody else's car, not once, but twice, you know, (laughs) I mean, that's gotta raise all kinds of red flags and everything. Ms. Burnett, why were you in this man's car again? The same reason. I ain't done nothing, and I'm tired of being accused of it. You know, I hear what you're saying, but your actions and your reactions don't match. <laughs> and when you add the, the extra flavoring to this is you're bored with the sex, this makes for a perfect storm to step outside of the relationship. Now, I'm not accusing you, because we're going to get to the bottom of this, but the flavor I'm getting now, not very good. I... All right, I want to get to the bottom of this, so let's talk about what we got. Sex less often, and she's bored. Came home with makeup smeared, and she's been in the car with the same man, and when she pulls up, she doesn't just get out the car, she sits there and, and has a conversation with him. And for all these reasons, poor Mr. Franklin believes that she's cheating. He's like, if she is, I'm out. What I'm not gonna do is stay in a relationship where I don't feel valued. Am I right? No, I work six, seven days a week to provide for my family. I'm not gonna do it. All right. So, I mean, clearly he's invested in the relationship. Right. I wanna know, is she invested in the relationship? We're about to find out the answer because this court has done a full and a complete investigation. At this time, the court will call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine, is she cheating? Ron, please just start with the Wolf in. Guy Wolf. Senator Grimm's over the witness stand. I got you. Thank you. Good day, Mr. Wolf. How are you? I'm great, Your Honor. How about you? Doing good. It's good to see you. You as well. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, Your Honor. I've been in law enforcement for more than 20 years, with most of that time spent as an investigator. I've also been a forensic voice analyst for more than 12 years and have conducted hundreds and hundreds of exams. Tell us, please, how voice analysis works. Sure. So forensic voice analysis works by measuring the spoken word. When you speak, you have AM and FM frequencies in your voice, like on a radio. When you tell a lie, the FM frequency goes away. The computer then analyzes that, and I can look and I can determine where somebody's being deceptive. All right. Let's take a look at the first question you asked. When you returned home and your boyfriend Bobby claimed you smelled like another man's cologne and your makeup was smeared, Was it because you had physical sexual contact with anyone other than your boyfriend? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. There was a second question, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, let's take a look at that question. During your six-year relationship with Bobby, have you had sexual intercourse with the man who drives the sports car 
and you claim is dating your relative? No. What did the voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. There was another question, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Let's take a look. During your six-year relationship, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your boyfriend, Bobby? No. What did the voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that she was also being truthful, Your Honor. So, Mr. Frank, are you kind of nodding your head? Hey, I'm, um, I'm only a man. I'll admit if I'm wrong, and I will apologize. Go, go on and put it on the table for her. You want to get married? Absolutely. <laughs> you go, Hogan! <laughs> oh, hey. All right, that's the first emotion I've seen from you that matches what's going on here. The fact that your partner doesn't know that you're not sexually fulfilled, that's something y'all have to talk about. Like, you know, hey, we need... We got some things we need to talk about. Let's have a nice dinner. I'm gonna make you your favorite meal. Let's talk about these things. Communication is the key. Clearly, there has been a break or something that's happened where you all are not sharing so that you're on the same page. Yeah, because you all get into an argument, and then I think I heard the consistent theme... He leaves. leaves. Which, yeah. you know, can be the right thing to do under certain circumstances. You don't want to stay and do something that you regret later. So, sure. if you want to... If you need to go and cool off, that's perfectly fine. But then, when he goes and cools off, you take it and you run. And then you go somewhere else. And then, when you come back, you all are not together. Right. And that's the problem. So, you all need to work on that. 